thank you for clicking on the video welcome back to the channel so a couple of things just a few things just a few happenings um and I did I did a, a whole video on this yesterday and I didn't upload it because I felt like I needed more you know like I don't want to always be the first one to come come over here and have to break a story because the story has been broke okay so I'm not breaking nobody's story but you know I don't have to I don't have to always be the, the first one to talk about it either because I want as much solid factual information as I can get before I you know come before you guys and give you my opinion on things whatever so this Michael Orr situation, of course, I wanted to I wanted to hear what the folks had to say. And so they have since um, come, you know, well, their attorney, I should say, has spoken for them. And, you know, they, they have a statement now, you know, that's out there in regards to, you know, these accusations and, the, and actually this petition that has been, you know, Put against them. I, <laughs> just a backstory. Um, Michael Orr is a retired NFL player, and I'm I don't know if you've seen it. Uh, it ain't one of the movies you gotta go see because I'm I'm not really. I mean, I I watched it, and I will watch movies just like it you know like who hasn't seen dangerous minds like i saw freedom writers the whole white savior trope you know like it's 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 very much that and though sometimes that shit gets mundane it's like mm. and so when i saw the blind side it was triggering only because it's like oh, okay <laughs> you know, they always got the little, the little small little white girl as his best friend. Because he's so dumb. He's just a big dumb jock. He don't have no friends. He get bullied all the time. As big as he is. He get bullied all the time. And the little poor, the little white girl, she saves the day. And her white mother and father, they take him in. Pull him off the streets. That was the story. And he didn't appreciate the... He didn't appreciate that. He didn't appreciate being portrayed like an idiot. You know, he didn't appreciate being portrayed like to be so weak and 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 just dumb. Like they really tried to play him and he he didn't appreciate that. Um but they took him they they took him in. They adopted him. <laughs> and they had this movie out and you know it's it's just a feel good story for everyone. This was back in 2009. And um we hadn't really I we hadn't really heard much about this family, much about much about him and I, and I remember when I saw the movie, um I think that they mentioned that they were owners of a few Taco Bell um you know, a, a few Taco Bells and and so they were very well off. Um, and they took him in and, you know, they got him on the football team and, you know, he was on the straight and narrow to, to the NFL and, you know, all these books have been written, all these interviews have been had, <laughs> um, you know, all this money has been made. Um, and he, he, he is petitioning, you know, the court on their ass because come to find out. They didn't adopt him. And they've been getting money and royalties from that movie, but Michael ain't seen a dime. And so, like, I, I just want to read. I just want to read this article. <laughs> and we're gonna we're gonna dive in. We're gonna dive in. Um, I have a few topics to 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 get to, so I'm I'm gonna try not to take forever with this but this right here we're gonna have to start at the top of the of the <laughs> of the docket we're gonna have to start at the top because this is a lot so this is coming from um espn.com and we're we're leading with with their attorney's um statement on the twoies behalf 
So Martin, Martin Singer issued a statement on the Tui's behalf that called Orr's claims outlandish and said the idea that the family ever sought to profit off of Mr. Orr is not only offensive, it is transparently ridiculous. And so I think that your statement is ridiculous because I don't believe you. You, you I don't believe you. I, let's, let's keep reading. In reality, the Tui's opened their home to Mr. Orr, offered him structure, support, and most of all, unconditional love. It's always that. It's always, don't bite the hand that feeds you. Fuck you. Disrespectfully, coming from me. That's that. The, in case Michael didn't say it, I, I said it. Um, let, 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 let's continue reading. They have consistently treated him like a son and one of their three children. Not when he don't get money and the rest of your kids get money off his story. That's not treating him like he one of your kids. Let's keep reading. His response was to threaten them, including saying that he would plant a negative story about them in the press unless they paid unless they paid him 15 million. So now this is extortion. Okay. Attorney Attorney Don Barrett, a member of Orr's legal, legal team said in a statement Tuesday night we try cases in the courtroom based on the facts. We have confidence in our judicial, judicial system and in our client, Michael Orr. We believe that justice will be served in the courtroom and we hope to get there quickly. Absolutely. I hope y'all can get there quickly as well so that we can get into this because extortion, that's what we're going with. Oh, it's all, oh, the black man, he trying to, he trying to, he trying to, um, what's the, what's the word? What's the, what's the term? Shake us down. He's trying to shake us down. The story of Leanne and Sean Tui and their efforts to help raise or out of poverty to the NFL was immortalized in the 2009 movie, The Blind Side. On Monday, or petitioned a Tennessee probate court with allegations that a central element of the story that the Tuis had adopted him was a lie <laughs> concocted by the family to enrich itself. So if they make themselves look like the white saviors, then of course they can cash out. Cause that's going to always, the white savior story always, always takes them to the other side. Um, it was a lie concocted by the family to enrich itself. Instead, less than three months after Orr turned 18 in 2004, the petition says, the couple tricked him into signing a document making them his conservators. So when he thought he was signing adoption papers, he was actually locking himself down to a conservatorship. Which gave them legal authority to make decisions, make business decisions in his name. So they just made all kind of money, all kind of money, all kind of money. Didn't give him a dime. Didn't get a dime. Y'all really had a whole movie. Made a whole movie. And he didn't receive anything from that. And it's about him. What kind of bullshit is that? The petition further alleges that the Tuies used their power and as conservators to strike a deal that paid them and their birth two children millions of dollars in royalties from and from the Oscar winning movie that earned more than 300 million while or got nothing for a story that would not have existed without him. According to the legal filing, the movie paid the two each $225,000 plus 2.5% of the film's defined net proceeds. Them people cashed out. In the years since, the Tuies have continued calling the 37-year-old or their adopted son and have used that assertion to promote their foundation, as well as Leanne Tuies' work as an author and motivational speaker. She out just, just talking to the people. She's out just giving speeches, just really getting coin, just really getting money. 
while Michael suffered after that movie because who want to work with the big dummy? You know, they got him out here looking like radio and it, it, it affected him in his personal life. Because people not thinking he's a leader. People, the, you know, football um, um, recruits and all of that. Because, I mean, ain't nobody going to put him on the team. He's not a leader. Look at him. Look at how they portray him. In his statement, Singer, this is this is this is their lawyer, the tours, Tui's um lawyer. He said agents for Michael Lewis, author of the best selling book that became The Blind Side, negotiated a deal in which the Tui family received a small advance from the production company and the tiny percentage of net profits. They insisted that any money received be divided equally. And they have made good on that pledge. <laughs> so they've been dividing the money equally. <laughs> Why y'all coming forward with this? Because even, you know, even it, whoever, whoever is lying, there, there are receipts. And so when it comes to a, 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 a court of law, they gonna want these receipts. And so, okay, Y'all better have y'all receipts because I know he got his. Where it says, where it shows he ain't getting no money. <laughs> like, I don't, what you mean you split it equally? They lying. The statement said the evidence documented in profit participation checks and studio accounting statements is clear. Over the years, the Tuies have given Mr. Orr an equal cut of every penny received from the blind side. Even recently, when Mr. Orr started to threaten them about what he would do unless they paid him an eight-figure windfall and, as part of that shakedown effort, refused to cash the small profit checks from the Tuies, they still deposited Mr. Orr's equal share into a trust account they set up for his son. Singer's statement said, Orr has actually attempted to run this place several times before. Oh, wait a minute. But it seems that numerous other lawyers stopped representing him once they saw the evidence and learned the truth. Sadly, Mr. Orr has finally found a willing enabler and filed this ludicrous lawsuit as a cynical attempt to drum up attention in the middle of his latest book tour. Also, he's on a book tour and they're saying he just this this is all for press, 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 press. press. This is a fucking mess. <laughs> this is a mess. And listen, by default, by default, I just believe that y'all did that shit. I just, by default, because of past practices, I believe that y'all bamboozled that man into signing himself over into a damn conservatorship. Y'all lying. I don't, this shakedown shit is, listen, of course that's what they gonna say. Of course, that's what they're going to say. What else they going to say? Yeah, we did it. No, they ain't saying that. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Swinger, what's his name? Singer, excuse me. Singer, yeah. This uh, Singer singer said, no, nah, we going to say it was a shakedown. And so they saying it was a shakedown. But y'all ain't, ain't fooling me. Not fooling me, bitch. Uh-uh. <laughs> uh the fuck uh in his court petition, or asked for the judge to terminate the conservatorship granted to the Tuies in August 2004. That was when he turned 18. For a full accounting of the money the Tuies earned using Orr's name and to have the couple pay him his fair share of profits as well as unspecified compensatory <laughs> and putative, putative damages. Can't even fucking talk. <laughs> I, they need to go to jail. I mean, yeah, get your money, but get get compensated to the fullest. But these folks need to go to jail. If they really lied like this, this don't come with jail time. Because I'm feeling like it, they need jail time. Like, y'all, I'm not going to read the whole entire thing because I want to move on to my other topics. But I'm all right. I'm going to put the link in the... um. In the description as far as um, 
this 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 here goes this <laughs> this here case i'm gonna put it in the description so that you can go and look at it at your leisure um but I, when they when they throw when they throw extortion out there a lot of people are going to believe that a lot of people are going to be like oh okay now okay no don't fall for it guys because that's a scheme and a scam right there like again what else are they going to say what else are they going to say and people need to go to jail if y'all have scammed that man out of millions and millions of dollars for this many years. But see, the thing is, if he found out, he found out about it um, in February 2003. I mean, 2023. And so I'm like, maybe he been trying to get something shaking and we just not finding out about it. Like, I don't know, but <laughs> all of this, all of it is a mess. All of it is a mess. And it's going to come out in the wash. And we just going to, you, you know, if I have to come back and retract, then we're going to come back and retract. But I don't think I'm going to have to. I think that I think that some receipts are, are going to are gonna prove that these folk <laughs> pulled the wool over this man's eyes. Anyway, moving on. So y'all's 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 ex-president, Donald Trump, is in a Fulton County jail. <laughs> He in a Fulton County jail. He, he he they they done got his ass. Okay, my girl that 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 been handing out Ricos left and right. <laughs> she been handing out Rico charges left and right, and see, and he thought that nobody would get him, but she's listen that girl that lady. She she she's something else. She gonna get <laughs> she gonna get to the bottom bottom mud. She gonna get to the bottom mud. Okay, so. She got she it's it's this is a racketeering, you know, the they the, the those are the charges and it I think I want to say there are 19 um it's like 30 it's a lot of co-conspirators, but I think she only brought charges to 19 other um co-conspirators, but that doesn't mean that the mother folk won't get charges brought on their ass. So, I'm going to read a little bit from this article um and and I'm going to also put this in the link. <laughs> I mean, drop this, drop this link in the, um, in the description box. So what exactly is the Georgia racketeering RICO law that prosecutors use to charge Trump and his cohorts? <laughs> the basic premise of the RICO charge is that the unlawful enterprise was built and established and maintained for the singular unlawful purpose to overflow, I mean, to overthrow the election and deny Georgians their right to vote. So back when, you know, back when, when, when people here were there were so it was like voter suppression. It was it was a thing. I got my vote through and I ain't vote for that ass. That's for damn sure. <laughs> but uh, some people had issues. There were a lot of them little hick town counties. They had issues. They had issues. And so it was so, it was so much willing and dealing to make sure that this man won. It's crazy. <laughs> it's really crazy. I was reading this and I'm like, 30 unnamed, unindicted co-conspirators are mentioned in the racketeering case. Um, I had to see what the heck was going on, child. My... No, the, the, it was almost like, you know how, I ain't gonna get into it. Anyway. <laughs> um, so 18, he had, they charged 18 other co-conspirators, although 30 other people, uh, 30 other um, co-conspirators were were talked about where they were um mentioned in the 41 count indictment um that it was a plot back in 2020 for the u.s u.s presidential election and it was it was because he had all of these people all over the land having meetings like really do setting up when i say it was it was extensive this is a rico case because the people that were named, the the those those other thirty people, thirty to forty people, all those people that were named, there's like a breakdown in in this article with the names, and it details their involvement and how they conspired <laughs> to, you know, overthrow the election. And I'm trying to figure out if y'all know these names and if you have evidence. 
that this meeting went down. This person met with this person so that this would happen. This person met with that per that that person so that they would do this back behind the scenes. Like it's extensive, and they ain't brought up on charges. Why are we only charging eighteen of these folks? I guess they're gonna charge eighteen of his closest <laughs> confidants, the closest conspirators, the folks that was really, you know, really, really close to him, like um his lawyer because <laughs> he one of the ones one of the 18 um while each defendant faces a different list of charges all 19 of them have been charged with racketeering in violation of georgia's powerful rico racketeering influence and corrupt organizations act <laughs> that's what rico mean <laughs> Which carries a sentence of 5 to 20 years. Give them every 20, every last year. I'm talking fullest extent. 20 years. 20 years. Thank you very much. It also lists those 30 unindicted co-conspirators as participants in the criminal enterprise in Fulton County, Georgia, and elsewhere. Willis, that's, that's, that's our girl. <laughs> that's our girl bringing down these RICO charges. She didn't charge the 30 unnamed co-conspirators in, in her investigation, but that doesn't mean that they can never face penalties for their involvement in the election fraud plot to keep Trump in power. She gonna come back for that ass. I know she is. I know she is. She got, she got, listen. Them, what's, what's the boy name? What's the man name? Damn. Ain't he right here from? Young Thug. Young Thug, right? Yeah, Young Thug. Them up the river okay up the river it's not looking good it's not looking good and and if she got this to stick that's gonna stick too that man going to jail <laughs> ain't god good you know that's how god works he will bring it back around full circle you know you think you're getting away with something you ain't ever getting away with nothing you ain't never getting away with sin you never getting away with it, okay? I just want you to know. You never getting away with it. Not never. Not never. And especially this type of shit. They was going to get that ass. And my girl. My girl. <laughs> I'm so proud of her. I'm so proud that it's a black woman really taking them down, you know? <sighs> anyway, moving on. This is, a, this is my last little thing. My last little thing. Because I just want to talk about this little sound bite. Um... Derek Jackson, you you y'all already know he and his wife, they have since divorced. I think they divorced, right? They divorced, separate. They divorced. Um, she's moving on. She's thriving, you know. She she got her revenge body going on. Um, I I be seeing her TikToks. The good she's moving on and she's healing, healing and growing and thriving. And we are happy for her. Um, he did an interview, and she's done an interview on this on this podcast as well. Um, but anyway, she, she, he, he did an interview and there's a soundbite that's circulating where he's explaining his why to his philandering ways. And, um, basically he blames her. Basically it was her, her triggers. So I didn't know that she had, um, back when she was in college, you know, they met in college and before they met very like, I want to say he, I, I think he said like a month before they met, like it. So it was recent. It was very new and fresh. What had happened to her? She was, um, assaulted, um, you know, read between the lines. And, um, then she met him and she, I guess she felt like he was, you know, the one that swept her off her feet because she fell madly in love with him. And, when they, he, he, this is, this is his version of events. When they would, when he would try to be intimate with her, his version of intimacy is to, you know, a little rough sex. He liked to choke, you know, pin you up against a wall. You know, he liked to really, you know, do all that, do all of those things. And she wasn't comfortable with that. She would tense up. It, it, listen, dry cooch, all that. It's triggering. It was very triggering for her because of what she had experienced. I'm sure she expressed these things to him. And so him being selfish and only caring and con and concerned with himself and getting and busting a nut 
he decided, okay, well, if she's going to push me away, then I'm just going to go and chill with these other girls on campus. And yeah, we cool and all that, but it's going to turn in. It turned into sex. It was always going to turn into sex. And the fact that you are making it seem like you were backed into a corner and like, oh, just it just happened that way. I just, no, you started hanging out with other girls with the sole purpose of fucking them. Let's not. Let's just not, okay? <laughs> because who's buying that? You're trying to blame her because you couldn't, you know, you didn't have the wherewithal or the empathy within you to say to yourself, okay, yeah, I like sex this way, but listen, I, li I like this girl and she's dealing with this. This is something, you know, I'm going to have to, you know, wait until she heals from this. I'm going to have to, you know... Go in gentle. Go with take it easy. Okay, we can go slower. You can go slower. <laughs> I don't I don't understand why you couldn't just go slower. Why you had to why you had to go go be in somebody else's coochie in bed and bed and <laughs> all that. Why? Cause that's what you wanted to do to begin with. So don't blame her. And so that's when the cheating started for him. And 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 that that I'm I'm assuming that just continued to escalate, and you know they they would have sex, you know, to procreate. Cause I th don't they? I think they got some kids. Derrick Jackson is full of shit, and if he's still out here trying to be relationship guru, and the girls is listening, they just trying to smash too. They just trying to see when it's they turn. It's corny ass. Anyway. <laughs> That's all I got for the messy corner. <laughs> anyway, um, that I just, I just, I just wanted to talk about a few things. I just wanted to talk about a few things. I gotta look at the dishpan hands, y'all. We are going straight away. I'm talking as soon as I turn the camera off. We're headed there. I would show y'all my feet too, but I'm not. I, this is a dress, and so I can't be. I'm a lady. I'm a lady. Anyway, be sure to rate, comment, and subscribe to the channel. It's Call Me Busby, and I'll chat with you later. Peace and light.